Hey everyone, this is Leonard, the Indie Band Coach with the Artist Collective and I am excited to be here today because we have a very special guest um, from a very cool uh, company that I have used for over a decade and uh, I'm really excited to bring uh, just some options and some uh, hope <laughs> in terms of being able to continue to share your music and continue to um, just make and create and all of the things that you know we're passionate about so you know one of the things that has been all a flurry here the past couple of weeks is is Facebook and the rules and all that stuff and we'll dive into that just a little bit and we'll also dive into some really cool things that are happening with Banzoogle that haven't even been announced yet we're gonna get the 411 before anybody else but I'm excited today because we have um, Dave cool from Banzoogle and you know, Dave, you know what? I'm going to bring him on because I'm getting ready to mess up his title. But let, <laughs> let's bring Dave on right now. And there he is, the man, Dave Cool. <laughs> and yes, that is his real name. Welcome, Dave. How are you, man? I'm good, Leonard. Thanks for having me. It's great to finally do something together. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I was, you know, before we had talked, before I was, you know, just thinking like how long I've actually been using uh, Banzoogle for my websites and I've started to help other people build their their websites and mm -hmm. so much has changed and so much cool stuff has been added that uh, you know it's been it's been a really cool thing to see and I would imagine you know how long have you been with the company uh, a little over nine years now but I was a user f um... I think in year two of their existence, I had my record label website with Banzoogle because I knew the founder's band in Montreal, up here in Montreal, Canada. And so gotcha. when I found out he started Banzoogle, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I started using it as soon as I heard about it. So when I joined the company, I looked in our admin and I was like, oh, yeah, there I am, like 2000, whatever <laughs> it was. Yeah, nice. And so, yeah, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, just real quick, like how you got into the music business and like what your you know i've you know i've heard you say that you're a recovering uh drummer <laughs> but yeah how did you yeah. uh, get into the music business and what do you what do you do now uh i'll try to make this quick but like a lot of people yeah. working in the industry starting off as a musician i grew up in a very musical family I was the drummer for my dad's blues cover band starting at the age of five when their drummer quit he kind of trained me how to keep a beat and then nice. i went on and played in various rock and punk rock bands up here in Montreal and, you know, had that, that, those limited success stories of touring and signing small record deals and sleeping in vans and all that glorious stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, completely blew one of my ears out. my right ear is just kind of there for symmetry. So everyone watching this, please wear your earplugs. <laughs> um, and I want to keep my left ear, you know, in relatively functioning order. So, um, I switched to the industry side and I just started a record label, built my website with Ben Sugal and, nice. um, by accident made a documentary film about the music industry i was trying to put together a compilation record with my favorite indie artists yeah with a little extra cd-rom video interviews with them and then it turned and it flipped and i made a feature film documentary about being an independent musician that had like the founder of cd baby derek sivers in it and the founder of sonic bids and a bunch of others yeah. um and that kind of became my calling card in the industry and i went on to book a couple of venues up here in montreal so i learned all about the live you know, nice. live booking and managing venues and um, got involved a festival here in Montreal as well. Nice. And then um, want to contribute some of that knowledge to musicians and started writing a blog and released a couple of free eBooks and Van Zugel came knocking like, hey, like you're here in Montreal, like why don't you do that for us? Yeah, and, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great, it worked out, you know, and, and I did it very part-time initially. I wasn't really looking you know, for my next gig just yet. And uh, yeah. they're, such, they're such great people. It, it felt like a family when I met the whole team. We're remote, but they do a meetup every year, at least pre-COVID, do right. a meetup every year, fly everyone in with their families. And I met them that first year. And I just, after after the dinner, I walked up to the then CEO and I said, I'm in, like, this yeah. is great. You guys, like the founders, wife had been at my band show when we were like 14 years old. Like there was all this what? weird coincidences of like, 
coming up to the same kind of music scene in Montreal and then the, the rest of the team which is great. So anyways, so that's how I wound up at Vans Google. I started off doing blogging, content yeah. marketing. I still oversee the communications, but I move more towards overseeing um, all the partnerships for the company. So that's how you and I kind of got yeah. connected. Uh, but anyone that wants to work with Vans Google, whether it's a, a music company, a uh, startup, a music association, music school, um, they basically all go through me. <laughs> so nice. I nice. manage all those relationships and, and choose like who, who we're going to work with and how we're going to work with them, that kind of thing. So it's great because it, I, I've been following music tech and the music industry obviously for over 20 years now. And now it's my day to day job to learn about new companies, work with companies. Um, so it's, it's a blast. Like it, it's really, a, a, for me personally, it's a dream gig, you know? So that's, yeah, that's cool. Now, are you still, so I guess with your ear, you're probably not still playing. You're probably yeah. off. <laughs> the industry no, stuff. a lot of air drumming these days, but no. Uh, no I understand. Yeah. Well, cool. So, yeah, and we, yeah, we've crossed paths a couple of times. We've, you know, you've sponsored a couple of uh, challenges, like mm -hmm. content challenges and things like that. So it's been a great, you know, opportunity just to work with, uh, your company work with Banzoogle and just I just love the the fact that you know you're not just you know for musicians but you're by musicians so it you know just looking on your website like is everyone like is that a criteria for being a part of it is like you you need to have had some music industry experience or is that just a coincidence at this point um you know it's definitely a plus because we're a music company so yeah. You know, I'm, I think it was two summers ago, like half our support team was on tour. Like they had all like <laughs> released albums for their own bands and solo right. projects. And But Bands was remote, so you can work from wherever. So some of them took vacation. Some of them just kept working their shifts and would gig at night and, you know, keep touring. So it's fun. Like it's, especially nice. when you're building out tools for musicians, we can just pull one of the many musicians that are, work for Bands and say, hey, what do you think about this? How could this be better? Or, you know, would this work for what you try to do and in, in, right. with your online presence? So it's definitely a strength and advantage. So it's not a criteria, I would say, sure. but um, when it you helps. apply, like it's it's definitely a bonus. Like if you've got the skills that right. we're looking for, that the company's looking for and you're a musician, like it's, it's a good combination for sure because you'll understand a little bit better what we're trying to do. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of that, that's a great, great way to look at this. So what you're trying to do now is definitely, and technically you always have been, but making it easier and giving musicians a path to be able to, you know, earn income and, you know, have multiple streams of income and give them a place to house all of that on their website and, you know, the you know, when social media first became really popular, you know, our, our website's dead, you know, nobody's ever going to need a website, and nobody's ever going to need email. Well, one of the things we obviously have started to realize is that, you know, th those are broadcasts, you know, those, you know, social media is talking to a lot of people at once, but it's when you're really able to control your, your narrative and control your you know, visuals and all of that is that you're really starting to, you know, build relationships and stuff. So Banzoogle is awesome for that. And I forget, I forget exactly when it was, but I, you know, I got mesmerized by WordPress, you know, a decade back. I'm like, oh, I could do all this stuff. And I just, I was away from Banzoogle and I apologize for this. I'm confessing. <laughs> it happens. Um, I, I was away from Banzoogle for maybe six months and i remember i think i still had the website and i just actually you know logged into it one day i'm like what are all these templates <laughs> these are new and i you know in some way shape or form i've never left again so um, nice. <laughs> so the cool thing is and let me pull this up really quick quickly and if you are Watching this right now, you'll know um, if you're a member of our Artist Collective membership that this month we are focusing a lot on our live stream tactics, tools, and training. And we're trying to provide, you know, different ideas and strategies to help you 
um, really hone in on your live streaming. And not because we think that's the only piece of content, but it is the best type of content that is going to help you reach your fans and help you bring your fans from just you know passive viewers to active supporters so with that in mind we've been you know seeking out the best in the business and that's why we are here today with Dave from Banzoogle because we want to actually give you an alternative or give you additional ways to think about how you can control your narrative and guys having a really kick-ass website is <laughs> one way to do that but not just visually uh you know practically you know mm -hmm. just what you're able to do with the function and so today what we're going to talk about with dave is fan subscriptions and obviously it is a very popular and obviously very you know lucrative um opportunity for people to you know especially when in march and april when we were first starting to live stream and fans were very supportive and you know you could just throw up your your paypal link and you know some people were were doing really well and i'm going to imagine now that it's not so new that there's probably been a dip in your tips um and so you know it's that whole exchange that whole time for money uh kind of thing is like you need to show up to make money and that's obviously one model and you know there are many different ways to to handle this so the unique thing about fan subscriptions is that it's a twist to that, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, today with Dave. Um, because, as I mentioned, if you haven't seen it, um, you know Facebook and all of the the guidelines and all of the discussion about them banning live streams, and you guys aren't going to be able to go live on Facebook again to share your music. Technically, that's not really true. The only thing that they really stipulated, by the way, this was in 2018, mm -hmm. with the Music Modernization Act, they were reacting to that, is that the more recorded tracks, the more pre-recorded music that you're using, the higher likelihood that your stream would get muted, either in whole or in part, or taken down. It just so happens that they made one change that's going to go into effect uh, October 1st that talked about them being able to delete your content or something which technically wasn't specific to music but that just happened to be the first time a lot of musicians saw the 2018 <laughs> guidelines so if you are someone that does rely on tracks we we know a lot you know there are a lot of DJs that are doing uh, DJ live streams or we know people that are, you know, singers and artists that are singing to tracks and things like that. Facebook might not be where you want to be. You might want to think about being able to have that content housed in your in your website. And I don't know if Dave wants to, you know what, let's save the announcement, Dave. I feel like I, I want to sure. save that because it's really cool. Dave just told me something before we went live that I didn't even know. Um, and you guys are going to be the first to know. So, Dave, talking about content, you know, we just mentioned this before, but, you know, being able to control um, your content, like, how important do you think it is as a musician to be able to, you know, basically control your content or own your list? It's probably the most important thing. If you if you want to make a career of it, um, you know, you mentioned you know, the rise of social media and, you know, do people still need websites? I mean, when MySpace launched, Banzigo was like, oh, no, like, are right. we over? Like, what's, you know, what's right. going to happen? And what ended up, well, you know what happened to MySpace, but even with <laughs> any other social media platform, we're seeing it right now with TikTok. Like, it's still not sure if TikTok is going to be a thing in the United States, you know? So, yeah. And and there are musicians, I mean, there's a lot of, mostly other content creators, but there's musicians who have become TikTok famous and it's become kind of an important platform for them. So it could just disappear because of, you know, one person's opinion on, on the platform. And that's kind of crazy. So you want to yeah. definitely own your space online and make sure and use these other platforms as they need to be used to broadcast and engage, but you should absolutely own your space on, on on the web, so your custom domain name, drive people there as much as you can, collect the data, know where they're coming from, get them signed up to your email list. It's the it's we're already towards the end of 2020, but it's email is still 
one of the most effective ways to reach your fans and especially when you're looking to monetize if you're looking to drive uh people to your live stream uh drive uh ticket sales for your live stream drive crowdfunding fan subscriptions which we're going to talk about uh dedicated email blast is going to do a lot more for you if you've built it up um than a lot of social media will do so it's it's just a if you're if you really want to make if you're serious about it and you want to have a career in music and you want to monetize and make money um having a website having an email list uh, are two of the most important pieces um, because you own them. Whether you use Bandzoogle, it's coming from a guy who works for a website platform, I realize, but whether yeah. you use Bandzoogle <laughs> or not, like, yeah. you know, and our thing is we we power the website, we manage the domain for you, we manage the tools that allow you to collect emails and things like that, but if you leave Bandzoogle, you take the domain name with you, you take your mailing list with you, you take all your content, your music, all that stuff, so you own it, like you own, so, you just build it somewhere else and you have all that stuff with you. So there's no cop, there was no copy my friends list from MySpace to Facebook, right? Or, you know, right. So, uh, with your website and mailing list, you can do that. Whether you're using Bandzoogle or not, you can, and then the opposite, obviously, I should be framing it more positively for Bandzoogle, but if you're leaving another website, <laughs> you bring all that stuff with you. Coming to Bandzoogle. Band exactly. <laughs> but but the, the point being, like, we don't take any ownership over your content, your emails, your domain, like all that stuff belongs to musicians as it should and for life, because then you can, you'll have that one place where your fans can, and industry can always find you. Um, and then with the email list, you can always, you know, let them know what's going on in your career in a dedicated, focused uh, way. Whereas on social media, yeah. it's very noisy and, you know, there's a lot of distractions. Well, yeah, it's noisy. And, you know, just to that point, like you are, you know, you are basically at the mercy of whatever whatever happens this week. And, <laughs> you know, while the stories were very sensationalized about Facebook banning live streams, are we really that far from it? Like, right. is it that crazy to think that, you know, something legal could happen? You know, again, TikTok is a great example, whether or not they, you know, the Oracle deal goes through and all that is, is yeah. here, you know neither here nor there right now but there's so many changes in social media that it's best to be able to have a place where you know that you can you can have your your income and your your revenue and your fans housed in some place to where it's like hey you know what guys you know our our facebook page is you know i'm in facebook jail right now uh <laughs> i don't know what i did but you know here's a link to you know the YouTube channel. Hey, you know what? Here's this other cool feature in my Bands Google site that I'm going to tell you about at the end of this presentation. That I don't even need that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So there's some cool uh, things there, and yeah, Bands Google was definitely one of those uh, websites that everything is musician first. And you know, we could do a whole hour just on the features of Bands Google. But <laughs> today, what we want to focus on, you guys, are fan subscriptions. And, you know, Dave, just real quick, tell us a little bit, you know, what are fan subscriptions um, and then like how long, how long have they been a feature on Banzoogle? Yeah, so we launched fan subscriptions in summer 2019, so a little over a year. And they were, it was one of the most popular requests we had uh, from our members. And, you know, we could have just slapped like a, a different payment setting on the store, but we, Built right. out a completely separate. It's it's its own place in the control panel where you can set it up and manage your subscribers and set up the tiers and and so what's up? Fan subscriptions are is it's it's an ongoing relationship with your fans where they pay in our in Benzicle's case a monthly fee for access to exclusive content uh, and rewards and so the, the exchange there is those fans those super fans are paying you monthly fee whether it's two bucks a month or 50 bucks a month depending on what they're get, they're getting in return you're gonna have to provide content and access that makes it you know right. worth it for them to keep paying that that monthly fee so it's it's like an online fan club that they that you that fans like subscribe that. to and then you're yeah. giving them con uh, content on a monthly basis that's usually exclusive um, mm -hmm. or first it's early access to new tracks new videos um, yeah. you know We'll get into this, but exclusive live streams are obviously a big thing. So you can have that just for your 
subscribe era online fan club. Nice. And, you know, obviously you, you dabbled on that a little bit, but, you know, some of the benefits of those, you know, of a fan subscription, you guys, are, you know, recurring revenue streams. And, you know, I like this, you know, bullet point here, Dave, where you talked about, you know, a more predictable income stream and the other thing about this that i like about the whole concept of a fan subscription is that you can set it up obviously we'll talk about tiers here later but you can set it up um, at a rate that is comfortable for you and set your fans expectations of what that is and then you can actually have even more control over your schedule so you're not necessarily trying to, you know, look at your Facebook insights to see when people are on, you know, so that you can have the best, you know, uh, people showing up for your live stream or something like that. So you can say, you know what, I'm going to do this many live streams. I'm going to provide this and this per month. And you can know that that's what you're comfortable with. And then you could base your you could base your tiers off of that, and people can decide whether or not if that's something that they they want to do. But um, yeah, I like that whole concept of just being able to not only control your your narrative but also control your time. I think is is really yeah. important. Um, but yeah, the you know another couple of points you know Dave you talk about you know well you mentioned a couple of them, but you know. How important are the rewards uh, to the fan subscription model? Would you say um, it's pretty, it's pivotal, really. Um, at least, okay. So this is going to con- might sound like a contradiction because I think on there are going to be some fans that want to support your career so much that they're not going to care so much about the rewards. Like they're not going to claim their rewards necessarily every month, mm-hmm. um, and those fans. We love them. They're great. Um, I've been a <laughs> fan for for several <laughs> artists where I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm I can get these things, but you know what? Here's my five bucks a month. You know, just keep doing what you're doing. But to get people into that ecosystem, to get people into that online fan, you have to give them a reason. It can't just be pay me five bucks a month because you like me. That's right. not a great, you know, um, proposition. So you have to find unique, interesting rewards or access to the content that um that your biggest fans will love um it's you know that makes sense again allow you to have sort of a deeper connection with these with these super fans um by giving them access to things that no one else has access to it's kind of like a you know not a secret club but it's it's kind of an insider yeah. club where you can really connect with them on a on a deeper level than you would uh, on like social media with every you know publicly with everyone yeah and there's definitely some you know you know benefits of being able to you know also frame it um that's something like you know a membership or something that's inclusive and Mm -hmm. you know we'll touch on that in a little bit as well but um we've also got just to let you guys know we do have several examples that will show you of people that are using fan subscriptions successfully on their you know banzoogle platform and one of the things I thought that was really interesting were the the words that they chose to use, you know, for the people that were subscribing and that whole thing. So there's there's some cool things to learn there. Plus, in addition to the announcement that we've already teased, uh, we also have a freebie that if you stick around to the end, um, that's going to give you a head start on literally being able to uh, start your fan subscription today, technically, if you want to. So. Um, but cool. So then there's a lot of talk, you know, about in comparisons of fan subscriptions and, you know, people are aware of a company called Patreon, uh, that is, you know, kind of a, you know, I guess Patreon is more of a subscription model too, but, yeah. uh, pledge music and which, man, I think they're gone too. Anyway, yeah, but a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> compare you know, this yeah. subscription model to crowdfunding and, mm-hmm. you know, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I laughed at the play music thing, but it wasn't was not by it no way a funny thing for anyone watching this who was affected by that. It was pretty terrible. They're, you know, they didn't pay. We had some members that were affected by that, one of which is in the examples later on the slides. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was we were partnered with them for years and 
it, you know, we ended that partnership when we caught wind of artists not getting paid. And so they were yeah. kind of the crowdfunding platform for musicians. And as Google launched crowdfunding at, as a answer to that, um, which is a separate feature. And the reason it's a separate feature, coming back to your slide, is yeah. that crowdfunding and, and pay, patronage and subscriptions are two separate things. They're, they're related in one way, which is fans give you money, but so is music sales, so is the merch sales. So they're, but they're very, it, it's a very different approach um, to crowdfunding versus subscriptions. Crowdfunding is you're asking fans to contribute most likely a single payment for a very specific project that has uh, a deadline and a, like a release date. Yeah. Where subscriptions, this is an ongoing relationship. So they're paying you monthly and you're giving them access and new content monthly. So it's a very, it's a different mindset. It's a different approach. It takes different planning um, to pull one off versus the other. But they're related in the sense that fans give you money and they're supporting you, but they're completely different types of revenue streams, I would argue. And they often get lumped in together when you're reading yeah. articles or whatever about crowdfunding. And it, you know, I even wrote a guest article, I won't say for who, but they edited the guest posts that say like, subscriptions are like, it's just like crowdfunding. I was like, no, I would never say that because they're <laughs> not. <laughs> you need to change that back because I would Please never, don't. it's confusing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, get, they do get interchanged, but they are, they're very different models. Yeah, you know, I think the actual, you know, skeleton of them of like, hey, there's, you know, this has tears, this has tears, they must be the same thing. Not, not true. Um, yeah. And, you know, speaking of Pledge Music, we, we were actually able to uh, use that to fund uh, a CD that we were working on. And uh, again, great, great company and, and great, you know, opportunity to, to do that. But yes, having a project based event is something that's totally separate than, you know, building recurring content that your fans are going to be able to you know come to and participate on an ongoing basis so mm -hmm. there is a difference between the two and that is something that you should know that you're not we're not talking about crowdfunding today okay and now i thought this was really interesting as well we've talked about social media and not necessarily putting your all your eggs in one basket necessarily because you you know, you don't own the basket. Um, but we're also not saying that fan subscriptions are the end all be all. So, you know, some musicians and artists might be like, hey, should I stop selling or streaming music or crowdfunding? Mm -hmm. And basically, Dave, you said no. <laughs> no, and it's, it would be tempting because like, oh, let's say you're pretty su successful at it um, and you're making a bit of money and, and it's comfortable, That's that would be a great place to be in, obviously. But I would argue that, you know, not all fans are created equal. <laughs> not all fans are gonna give you that five, 10 or 20 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, because some fans just, they can't afford, especially, you know, these days. So yeah. giving your fans at every level an opportunity to, to, to support you, I think is really important. So whether that's a stream on Spotify or adding you to a playlist on Spotify, or downloading a track directly from your what paying you to you know buy your digital album on your website or a piece of merch or contributing to crowdfunding or subscribing to your fan club online um i think you should have all those options available to fans because because not every fan's going to want to do all those things or some of those things so um why not let give fans the choice basically and and quick aside like we launched um a pretty simple tip jar back in April um, that's commission free. Every, all the sales through Benzigo, the subscriptions fee, like the subscriptions revenue, crowdfunding, it's all commission free through Banzoogle. And we launched a, a commission free tip jar so you could use credit card or PayPal. Fans could to contribute to an artist um, during live streams and also just as a main call to action on your website. And I got the figures here. This is also an exclusive because we haven't released these numbers yet. Um, we're going to next week, but yes, yeah, since, uh, sorry, since May, we launched in early May, Benzigo members have generated over $180,000 just in tips. And the average tip, this is the crazy statistic, is $42.12. What? So like, it's one of the, it's like, a, it's such a simple thing, but giving your fans that mm -hmm. option 
to support you, you never right. know what the result is going to be. And, and so I won't get into all this. We'll get completely sure. derailed. But <laughs> we're releasing an infographic that shows all the revenue streams uh, through your website that you can generate and what Vanzoogle members have done since the pandemic began. So tips is one thing. Live stream tickets is another. And fan subscriptions, uh, just under $140,000 since uh, mid-March through fan subscriptions have been generated by Banzoogle members, and it's uh, obviously not all Banzoogle members are doing it. So, it's it's real money. Like we're seeing in the reports, like there's yeah real money being generated. Whether it's fifty bucks a month for some artists, or even a thousand or more dollars a month mm -hmm. from other artists, um, you know that's real income, commission free. That yeah. you know that you're making. So again, giving fans options to donate money, subscribe to you, buy your music. Like people ask us, like. You know, do, do people like it's streaming is, is, you know, it's all streaming now. It's 85% of the revenue in the music industry. Yeah. In a certain ecosystem of the, like the main, you know, major label system it is. But right. it, on the DIY side, like fans still want to support artists a lot. And, you know, sorry, I quote another statistic in digital music alone, just under $500,000 of sales through Van Ziegel since mid March. So digital. somebody's buying. Somebody's downloading MP3. something. <laughs> <laughs> right. So just under 500 grand of just digital. Those are digital albums and tracks. There's a whole other like merch was like, I think over just under $4 million in merch. So all the physical merch. Right. Stuff. So, you know, it's, it's smaller, but $500,000 is nothing to, to sniff at. And you add that with tips and fan subscriptions and merch. And all of a sudden you're talking about a revenue mix where you can pay a few bills pay a few bills <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah and you know i think i forget who said it um but we were oh i was talking to bob baker last week actually <laughs> and uh he was just talking about his his youtube channel and how that's like paying some of his bills and actually mm -hmm. paying a lot of his bills and stuff now but he he said something that I think is very relevant to what you're talking about, but it's like if you can build in revenue streams and think about them in increments of a bill, yeah. then because he's like, you know, I first started off and, you know, I was just able to, you know, you know, buy buy lunch or buy buy a couple of dinners a month. And then it, you know, became the utility bill that was taken care of and then all of a sudden i was you know looking at a car payment and then so it's like if you are able to not just be like oh you know how much can i go from zero to you know the world but you start thinking about you know what if i'm able to just go and be able to build this one revenue stream doing something that i love to do on my own platform that mm -hmm. you know on my own terms and my own time it's it's very it's kind of motivating to be like okay now what's next what's my next what's my next bill that I want to pay um, <laughs> that's really cool but yeah just being able to see you know that that breakdown uh, you know we've you just mentioned it but just being able to talk about you know those different revenue streams right there that some people are going to stream some people are going to buy merch and tickets and you know although they are very different in some ways you know. If you do have the opportunity to have crowdfunding, there, are, there are going to be people that don't want to contribute on a monthly basis, but we'll give you five hundred dollars, you know, you know, off of a, just hey, let me write you a quick check, but I don't want to, I don't want to see something in my account every month. That's just too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah, definitely takes all kinds, but, um, but yeah, I like the. I like that mix, and I think that's something that a lot of a lot of us, a lot of musicians, can can really take advantage of and be thinking about, and not just a a one off. You know, I'm going to live stream. I'm going to put my links in there, and I'm going to go live every day, and that's what live streaming is, or that's yeah. what my revenue is. It yeah, and it's there. it's something I've been talking about a lot, obviously, uh, since mid March, and given webinars and written a lot of guest articles for various blogs. But it's really about focusing especially now on div diversifying your revenue stream so that when live does come back if you're a live performing musician you're going to have all this set up 
online. You're going to have your business set up online with all these different revenue streams. And then you can go back on the road and, and play shows and play festivals, hopefully, and get back to that. But you'll have this all established now. So it's take the time now while you have it. And mm -hmm. like you said, I, I love Bob's analogy. I'd known Bob for 20 years. He uh, He's a Benzigo member. And I actually, in one of the books behind me, I've got a quote on the back of one of his music marketing books from years ago but um yeah, i love yeah. that analogy of like this oh now i can pay my you know electricity bill with with through music and now i can pay this like just mm -hmm. building it up like not that's a this is a whole other discussion but not putting too much pressure on yourself to be like all right i'm making 100 percent of my income for music you know or i'm a failure no it's right you know you're building up momentum you're you're building your career and it takes time just like with any small business sure and so now for musicians that have been affected by you know, uh, live shows um, being put on hold, you know, it's the perfect time to get your online business going. And then you have those revenue streams for when everything, you know, hopefully soon right. uh, goes back. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of the, the big thing that I've also been talking about is taking control of taking control of your, your music, taking control of your content, your, your business. And, you know, we don't know, when if at what capacity mm -hmm. you know your local venues are going to open up how long they'll be open um and just you know flu season's coming up and there's all this talk whether you think it's a hoax or not doesn't matter the venues are closed um <laughs> or if they've been open they might have been closed again but we just got here in montreal kind of give you an idea like just yesterday uh -huh. um after opening a little bit everything's now second wave is hitting us in uh in montreal and and venues are closing back down uh, they're yeah. limiting crowd sizes back to almost you know being not worth being yeah. open um unfortunately so yeah it's it's we're not out of the woods by any no means. and yeah just you know i'm still a, a still do some booking a booking agent and just you know having some of the the venues come back and say yes um we definitely want to have you guys but you know we're only at 50 percent capacity so instead of your your band can you come as a solo acoustic right yeah it's like ah well <laughs> i don't really do that right <laughs> um so yeah and so now as we're, we're talking about this so thinking about all of that obviously the benefits of being able to have a subscription mm -hmm. you know question is can subscriptions actually work for you mm -hmm. and so you know dave just give us a little bit and obviously from your experience on the website of like what what are the best types of artists and bands and musicians that are would be prime for a good fan subscription model yeah this was really important for us when we first launched the feature um in 2019 was making it clear that it wasn't like um this magical you know revenue stream that's going to work for every single musician um because it, it does and we'll get into this it does require a lot of work yeah and upkeep to manage um it's really and i say established fan base what what is and i know i'm gonna get asked what's that number i, I can't <laughs> put a number on it but if number? you're just if you haven't released a single yet or if you just started releasing a couple of tracks focus all of your energy on building up your fan base content. um yeah content 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 if you have a bit of a fan base you've got a mailing list going you've got you know pretty good presence on social media um then you can start thinking about this model but before that it's really if you have you know you, you don't and we've seen it in the data for sure and I, you know people that launch this type of thing too soon it's like their parents and maybe a friend that are paying them you know five bucks a month and you know they're trying and, and that's fine and, and as long as your expectations are tempered with <laughs> with right. that but you're probably better off uh focusing on content releasing music releasing videos um you know putting your music up for sale again offering you know take donations things like that like all the other revenue streams we talked about you know crowdfunding and then the su subscriptions are really for artists that have a little bit more of an established fan base who have been around a little bit longer um mm -hmm. that can monetize that 
because it's a numbers game. And I think Pledge Music used to say it's like 15% of your mailing list are the super fans that are going to contribute on average $60 to your crowdfunding campaign. Not not quite sure the, what that would translate the to numbers. for subscriptions, but yeah, gives you an idea if you have a thousand person mailing list and 15% of those are going to, you know, uh, contribute 60 bucks, you know, then you start getting a, an idea of budget. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if you, you probably remember these guys, Topspin, old school, yes. like old school yeah, director yeah, yeah. fan marketing. Yes. Um, you know, they're, they used to talk about don't try to monetize until you have 2,500 fans on your mailing list. I don't believe that. I, th I think that's probably too high of a threshold, but I do understand yeah. the sentiment at the time is that you need to have enough fans, enough data, so that the percentage of fans that are going to contribute to a subscriptions uh, or online fan club will be worth worth the, worth the, yeah. the effort. Exactly. Yeah. So establish fan base. Um, if you're prolific with creating content, so if you're if you love creating new songs and new videos and writing blog posts, um, mm -hmm. subscriptions is great for that. Um, it you know you have to love to engage with your fans because it's really social media is all about engagement for sure. Um, having an online, like this kind of like online fan club is really about engagement because these are your biggest fans. You're going to want to be in there talking to them, posting new content, responding to comments, things like that. Um, and it also lends itself to, that fourth category is a bit of an outlier, but it's a lot of musicians teach their instrument or they teach voice and fan subscriptions just lends itself so nicely uh to teaching because it's all about new content new lessons you know so yeah. new videos and one-on-one -on -one interaction we'll get into that later like the types of things you can offer but um so if you're a music teacher fan subscriptions is, is something that you can definitely try um because some of your students are going to want that extra access to you um mm -hmm. on a monthly basis cool and yeah the dope just and there are definitely a lot of musicians that i know that you know, maybe you're not a musician that gives lessons or you're not a music teacher yet, but you've thought about it. You know, this, you know, to me, that sort of model may or may not really depend on your fan base, so to speak. That's just, mm -hmm. that's yeah. filling a need and that's providing a, a service, so to speak. So, yeah. um, and I think we've got, you know, there's some examples of some artists that are providing rewards and things that don't have anything to do with music. Um, and so there's definitely some opportunities out there for being able to, you know, diversify a little bit and just really think about, you know, things that people would be interested in. And it may or may not be, you know, music related. Obviously, we want it to be, but it yeah. might it might be something different. So yeah. um, so that's who subscriptions could be for. And then, you know, pretty much opposite of that. Who is it not for? Uh, basically, as as Dave mentioned, you know, if you're not really loving engaging with fans, or if that's not your if that's not your deal, if that's not your sweet spot, um, you know, engagement is you know one of the foundational principles of why people would want to you know join your club or be in your your ecosystem. So, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, there's you know I would imagine Dave that's probably one of the you know missed steps or criteria that you know we kind of rush into because we think about this this model of having people you know pay for something but then we don't think about how we actually yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. like to be responsive to comments or you know being on screen or or even just creating and creating new content like if, you know you have to you have to put out New, if you're charging someone monthly, they're going to expect, you know, some new content monthly, and that could be a quick exclusive update. It could be a rough track. It could be it could be any number of things. But you have to be consistent with uh, creating content. And if you're not, that's fine. Not all musicians are, and you don't have to be. But if you're looking to be successful with this revenue model, it's definitely something to consider. Cool. And yeah, there's an consistency is the word to remember there guys not frequency yeah. so if you can you know if you can set up your own frequency that works for you and you can set your fans expectations of what that 
frequency is. It could be weekly. It could be monthly. It could be, you know, one piece of content a month that you spend, you know, a little while recording and then you edit it. Like that could be your that could be your thing, and that's fine. So this isn't saying like, okay, I've got a subscription model now. I've got to put something up there every day. Technically, I think that's kind of what we're trying to give you an alternative to do so that you don't have to feel like you've got to show up on social and live stream every day. So, yeah, yeah so just keep that in mind. So then, you know, as we're talking about the content that you're creating and, you know, one of the cool things about, you know, this model is that, and you alluded to it earlier, but it's going to take some work to get this set up. But once you set it up, then you can just use it as opposed to, say, a live stream concert like every so often is that you're kind of starting from scratch each time. Um, but, you know, what would you say, you know, as we're setting up, musicians are setting up tips or setting up rewards, what are some of the uh, things that you would recommend for uh, rewarding their fans? Yeah, it's you have to think along the, t along the lines of, anything that can't be found somewhere else, like what, what's going to be really special for these biggest of, you know, your super of your super fans, uh, what's meaningful to them? What, what access would be meaningful to them? Would it be like monthly Q and A's my exclusive live streams? Um, you know, a look yeah. at your so a songwriting session, you know, anything yeah. that you can think of that would be special, a special experience or special content for those biggest fans that you can do on a on a monthly basis maybe not every month but every couple of months especially for some of the bigger things like maybe you do a live q a once every couple of months and a live stream once every couple of months so you're interchanging that kind of thing but mm -hmm. it's really access and content that can't be found anywhere else that would be kind of cool for your fans to be a part of or have access to mm -hmm. and that's you know that goes back to the whole super fans uh guys these aren't these aren't things that you're gonna you know throw out there to cold audiences that are gonna be like no. i don't know you why would i want to have more access to you but that's a good uh that's a good point so yeah just being able to do that that's a great you know tip for being able to set up your rewards um and i love this too is like to keep it simple you know one of the things when we set up our our pledge music campaign back in the day was making sure that you can deliver when it's time you know when that time comes because you kind of had that you know the campaign ended and then you had a certain time frame to get your stuff done and then you had a due date to then send it out again this was a crowdfunding campaign but mm -hmm. it's like this is obviously on an ongoing basis you want to make sure that it's something that's simple and as you know Dave's had alluded to here in the slides but you know to be able to manage all of those things you don't want to necessarily create more work uh, for yourself than you're able to do because then you're not going to be able to actually give the people what they want yeah exactly <laughs> you want to set yourself up for success and you can always add more tiers and more things later people love that but once you start taking things away, that's when you get into, <laughs> into trouble. Right. You've overpromised like, and under yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, this is not what I signed up for. Um, so yeah, and you know, some of the rewards for fans that you've seen work the best. You know, what are some of the you know, we've got some examples there on the screen, but yeah, yeah. what are some of the best, you know, examples that you've seen? Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of Benzoogle members turn it into almost like a private streaming service plus, like, you know, access to your, their full discography at all times, plus early access to new tracks, plus like a monthly live stream or something else that like, you're paying five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month to sh have access to all my music I've ever created, plus mm -hmm extra access to me, the artist in these Q and A or, or live streams, like that combination we're seeing quite a bit because it's pretty simple. You put up yeah. all your music, fans can log in and, and stream and often like they allow downloads. So for your entire discography and you're posting a new track when they become available and you're doing something exclusive for that audience for the $5 a month or something like that. So that's like, and I love that because it's simple. 
it's mm-hmm. manageable. <laughs> um, yeah. It's all digital. Once you start, and we'll get into this, once you start getting to physical rewards, you really have to think about pricing, your time, the cost of, you know, you don't want to set up a $5 tier and give away a, a, a gay <laughs> vinyl, you know, every <laughs> every month. You know what I mean? Like, you really have right. to price it out and, and make it worthwhile. So, and you can't do that on a monthly basis. So, you know, there are ways to add those types of things in that, you know, um, that makes sense. But especially when you're starting out, and especially if you only have a couple of tiers, like keeping things mostly digital um, okay. is probably the right way to go. And, you know, so another thing that we see, uh, I'm just looking at the slide here, um, is putting a store um, in that fan club area that has cheaper pricing on your merch or mm-hmm. exclusive merch even we've seen where you fans can uh you know subscribers can are the only ones who can get this limited edition shirt or whatever um so nice. again exclusivity uh, making them feel special uh with pricing exclusive items things like that and then yeah the the live streams and the, and the q a i mean that that kind of access and you know i've attended some of i've attended some of you know, exclusive live streams over the last year. And sometimes there'll be five people. Sometimes there'll be, you know, 50 people. Mm -hmm. They're pretty, you know, they can be pretty intimate, but then you really, that's what the fans are paying for. They're they're paying to have that exclusive uh, experience and interaction with the artist. And it's, they, you know, they tend to be a little bit less polished, although they don't have to be. Yeah. but they can be just a little bit more off the cuff and, and interacting with the fans and bring them on screen and answering questions and things like that. So it's, you know, those are the types of things that we're seeing, um, you know, that are kind of the most common and then they also work very well. And there's, you know, there's all sorts of other rewards, um, obviously, yeah. that you can, yeah, yeah. you can offer. Yeah, and actually, you guys, we, um, I'll have a, I'll put a link in here. Um, I'll just tell you what it is because we're, coming up on an hour here but um and dave are you okay you okay to go a little bit yeah okay, yeah. okay cool we got some good stuff guys <laughs> uh but i'll actually put a link in the post here but um you know dave wrote an article i think it was last year mm-hmm. uh but it was called 71 ways to reward your fans and basically i have you know swiped those 71 ways and i also had been working on something myself but it was you know basically 30 ideas that you can you know use as live stream prompts that aren't necessarily doing an actual concert but it's basically 30 live stream prompts or even content prompts that you could use so i've got those together in a pdf um and i'll get a link to that here closer to the end but i'll put those in the comments but um we've got we've got a basically 101 ideas for you to be able to start your your fan (laughs) subscription um So, yeah, so then, you know, as we're talking about rewards, you know, the other piece that you've mentioned a couple of times in terms of like five or ten bucks is, you know, you can set up different rewards at different tiers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what you just mentioned was an awesome way to like stack, you know, some, you know, basically think about it like digital content with maybe some live you know, live streaming or something like that. So it's stuff that you don't have to like make yeah. <laughs> every yeah. month. Exactly. But yeah. So what are your, what would your recommendations be for, you know, people setting up tiers if they're going to do uh, the fan subscription model? Yeah. Again, keeping it simple at, f- at least at first, if you don't have any experience with it. So, you know, we'll look at some yeah. examples, but we see a lot of band Zoom members just have one tier and it's that kind of, subscription plus type model you can do you can do that with two tiers where you can have like a five dollar month that has access to all your music plus any new music first and a second tier that has all of that plus the monthly live stream or q a session you know like yeah breaking it up that way into different tiers just to give you an idea of of how that could work and then you can add on a third tier that maybe has merch discounts and maybe exclusive merch and things like that so people are paying 25 bucks a month and they have exclusive access to discounts and you're going to put out you know unique merch you know and not necessarily every month but on a regular enough basis that it's worthwhile for those those fans so just you know and it can go like the benzigal features 
super flexible. So you can do a simple one tier thing. You can also do a multiple, multiple tier with multiple rewards per tier. You know, I wouldn't recommend it's possible. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, unless you can manage it. And right. some people will point to someone like an Amanda Palmer, who's super successful and she's on Patreon and like has, I don't know how many tiers and how many levels and different tons of rewards. And it's awesome. And she's, she's like the shining example of fan engagement. She loves engaging with her fans. She lives online yeah. and like interacts with the fans. It's amazing. However, it's not, you can't replicate that as a you know if you're just starting out she actually you know she has staff who help manage you know yeah. you have enough money being generated and there's no way you could do that on your own uh, with that many tiers that many rewards per month that kind of thing so you have to be really honest about what you can manage uh, whether it's just you or if you have a small team great what can everyone do to contribute how can you set this up uh, for, to succeed and, and to really delight your your fans on a monthly basis, so I would start very you know very small and then <laughs> build it up. And like you can make announcements out of it. You're like we've added a second tier, and now you can ac ask access to this, or we've added this extra perk for members of the the third tier, or first tier, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. You're better off doing that again than than starting off with like. You know, everyone Here's gets my all... ten tier system. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and then people subscribe to like the first one, <laughs> and you know all the other, all, you know, the work that went into all the other ones is for naught. So, yeah, definitely cool. um, uh, start small and make sure those lower tiers, um, if you do have multiple tiers, are scalable. So I eat like digital rewards, so that uh -huh. it's you know you're not physically creating something for five dollars a month. Yeah, because, you know, you think about, you know, not just the cost of shipping or the cost of, yeah. you know, the materials that it is to make something physical, but, you know, there's also the time, you know, the cost of your time to actually Absolutely. make that stuff. So don't mm -hmm. forget, don't forget time. You know, it's it's the only resource we can't make more of, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with the different tiers, um, as you mentioned before, start with maybe one to three. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying subscriptions and you're just starting out, keep it really simple. Um, and I know we've talked about it a couple times, but we're going to show you some really easy one tier uh, subscription models here in just a minute. Um, but yeah, just it's not something that you necessarily want to try to go, you know, zero to 60 starting off. This is starting to introduce a new you know potentially for your fans a new way of being able to support you uh, yeah. you know prior to march you know chances are you you probably weren't you know putting paypal and zelle and venmo links in your posts <laughs> but you know now it's something that's like oh well, that's just common and that's just you know that's because they lost their gigs you know it's just getting fans used to you know what your what your model is and what you're doing so yeah, just basically keep it simple, guys. Yep. Um, and so you've got some ideas just in terms of, you know, not just the tiers, but the pricing of them. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it could be tempting to be like, you know what, I'm going to have a, a $5 level. I'm going to have a $50 level and a $500 level, you know, because they say, you know, you got to have the big ticket items because, you know, people will go out there and buy them. But you have a you have a you have your own you know, probably, you know, experience and also data that kind of mm -hmm. shows, you know, maybe a little bit differently. So, you know, talk to us about the tier pricing. Yeah, so definitely would recommend having a tier that is like a $2 a month tier that like, you know, again, that adds up if 25 of your fans, you know, subscribe to that on a monthly basis. That's real money. Again, it pays, might pay a utility yeah. bill for you, you know? Um, and I definitely started at the $2 level because $1, like, even though Benzigal doesn't take a commission, there's still processing fees from whether it's Stripe or PayPal. And so after those processing fees are, you know, it's, yeah. it's less than a dollar and that, that kind of sucks. So, and that processing fee is, is the same, right? Whether they're giving, a dollar or or a hundred dollars so you know um yeah i would start with two bucks just so you're actually getting a dollar whatever dollar 70 whatever the case might be um and i you know just hit on this before it's an extreme example like giving away vinyl for five dollars a tier but you have to make sure that 
the tiers are profitable for you. So again, di scalable digital for the lower tiers. And, you know, if you are offering higher tiers with physical rewards, making sure that you factor in the manufacturing costs and the shipping costs. Um, and that's getting back to crowdfunding again, mm -hmm. different thing, but a lot of bands get into trouble because they have these awesome rewards and they forgot to factor in the shipping costs. So like the pledge was 25 bucks for vinyl and they cost them 20 bucks to make it and $10 to ship it and they lost $5 per vinyl. So it's, you know, you really, especially when you're doing something that's ongoing, you really have to pay attention to what your, what your hard costs are and what it's going to cost you to deliver on those rewards, which is, which is why digital rewards are so nice. <laughs> Yeah, and that's you know that's the cool thing too is like, um, I actually didn't look at it like this, but I think your list of rewards, you know, they're either primarily, if not all, digital. I think most of them are digital. I think there's some physical ones yeah. in there yeah. too, but um, so that's really cool because that's stuff that you can make once, and then just provide access to or links to. Um, so that's definitely. A good thing to consider and I, you know I, when i thinking about the pledge music and just the the crowdfunding thing you know i i think their popular thing was you know make sure you start off at just a dollar and all mm -hmm. that stuff but then considering the you know the actual fees and stuff wasn't something that was discussed or whatever but i definitely like the whole starting off at a a smaller smaller increment just to make it something that's a no-brainer like you yeah. don't want someone to wonder like, oh, is this two dollars? It's like, you know what? I pay more for that than one cup of coffee. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so another ex Leonard, you're getting all the exclusives today because it's it's a good time um, to be talking to me, I guess. But um, we're, we're actually working on. Uh, it's not ready yet, but it will be ready hopefully within the next month. Um, right now, with when you're setting up the tiers, you set the price. So whether it's two two bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever, we're going to add a tier that's pay what you can. And what? so with a minimum similar concept to when you're offering digital music for sale, um, you, where you can set, uh, set it to be pay what you want or pay what you can with a minimum. So we're going to do that with subscriptions because again, it's giving fans another option of like, Hey, I can only give, you know, a couple bucks and there's not necessarily, you can set it up so you can either give rewards or not, or if it's just like a, hey, if you want to support me on a monthly basis kind of thing. Sure. Um, so we're adding that functionality. It's being uh, developed uh, as we speak. So um, woo, yeah, I know it's, it's, it's been a request as well, and we're, we're excited to, to launch it. Um, again, just another you know, way to encourage fans that maybe <clears throat> they're not interested in the rewards or they can't afford to contribute sure. you know, that amount every month. So they, they enter the, the amount that they're they're comfortable with so and in terms of pricing you know uh, definitely recommend gradual increases between the tiers uh i gave the example of like two bucks five bucks ten bucks you know you can make it two five twenty you know yeah but as long as and i gave an extreme example of like two bucks twenty bucks two hundred dollars but you know we do see that and what you see in the data and again i, I won't reveal the artists involved and and everyone's it's a relatively, it's now, it's relatively <laughs> new revenue stream and you know what it, it's it's a lot of trial and error but what we see in the data even with this band that's established is they generated a bunch of revenue the first month because fans contributed to the 250 dollars but then those fans canceled after a month uh -huh. so it's not it's not so they almost were treating it like crowdfunding Ra I got rather you. than you have to keep in mind that this is a monthly recurring revenue stream. So if you're you're charging 250 bucks, are you sure are you offering the value to your fans? And does your can your fan base sustain a 250 dollars charge every month? That's a lot. That so, is a lot. <laughs> so a, few, a handful of their fans did contribute to that level, but they canceled after a month. So it was like a one time. $250 donation kind of thing, which is interesting, yeah. but it's not quite how this revenue model is most, you know, is best used, I guess I would say, but. Right, and you know, that's that goes to that whole thing that we talked about up front is that being able to build something that's a little bit more predictable. So it's like if you have just this one, this one off $250 payments, like cool, that's great for this month. Yeah. <laughs> But next month we're you know back down to 
you know, just the eating out once a month, the kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, that's being able to, you know, have these smaller stair steps to where you can actually start to build, you know, fans and, you know, and I've also mentioned too, like giving fans some place to go, um, giving them, you know, whether they're already super fans or maybe you are live streaming and there's plenty of Facebook groups and different places where you can go and live stream and you'll be live streaming to a cold audience or whatever, but being able to, whether or not there's a tip jar present is not the point, but being able to give fans some place to go if they like what they hear. So it's not just, oh, let me just tune in and let me just see if I, you know, see this person live streaming again. But, you know, again, it's a, it's a numbers game. It's a percentage game. Yeah. And, you know, while we're talking about funneling people to your to your email list and, and owning the traffic, you know, there's still, you know, that kind of... Uh, I think even Facebook has started doing like top fans and stuff. There's still going to be people that are checking your Facebook page yeah. that, you know, have actually, you know, can, you know, maybe they're, we'll call them a social media super fan because, you know, they might not be on your list, but they see all your posts and they interact with all your posts. Being able to capture those fans and lead them someplace that's not necessarily going to be, you know, a $250 live stream ticket, but it's like, oh, you know, I missed a couple of those live streams. It'd be cool to be able to be in their world on a monthly basis. Yeah. Fan subscriptions, your website basically, um, is a great is a great stair step, is a great, you know, low barrier entry point for them to be able to be able to experience your stuff on a more recurring basis. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So looking at the um tiers and all of that stuff we've we've talked about you know some of the rewards and different things like that and now we've got a few examples coming up but before we do that i wanted to see if you'd be cool now to reveal what you're going to be talking about (laughs) tomorrow uh, because i think it's really cool and as we just mentioned giving fans some place to go tell us what you've what uh, Banzoogle has gotten got cooked up. It's going to be now tomorrow. This is exclusive right now, people. I'm just saying this. <laughs> yeah, the press release I think is going out tomorrow. But and it's you know in the grand scheme of things, it's a bit of a minor update, not to overhype it. But we've made it easier if you're a Banzoogle member, um, and this r- relates to fan subscriptions, um, those monthly exclusive live streams. So we we've, we've made it a lot easier to incorporate those live streams directly on your website. So we've integrated. Um, with Twitch and Crowdcast. Um, so instead of embedding code or finding the code and embedding it, uh, we've added it to the video feature, the fan subscriptions feature, and the tip jar feature directly. So even if you're doing a public one and you want to drive fans to your website and they can tip directly in that commission-free tip jar while watching the live stream, it's way easier. So now there's integrations with um, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, and Crowdcast. Uh, so that works with pre-recorded videos and works with now with live streams. Um, so that's now live in the platform. Um, and we're super excited because it's it's a bit of a minor update, but we're, you know, things are changing so fast and we're, you know, doing our, like we had a whole roadmap for this year that yeah. got thrown out the window March 14th or 15th, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and we're, we added live stream ticket sales. We added the tip jar. Now we're adding this live stream integration. You know, we're, we're, um, developing these these tools that are are more relevant right right now, um, and that's one of those. So it just it makes if you're a band single member musician who wants to offer live streams publicly and get donations, you can use it seamlessly with the tip jar. Or if you're doing fan subscriptions, it's just easier to have that feature now, where you just paste the link and it automatically ports in the 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 embed code yeah. um, for you and fits it, you know, to the screen. And it's just, yeah. And one of the original missions of Bands was to make musicians' lives easier online. And that goes to that, you know, not having to find code, learn how to embed the code, that kind right. of thing. So it's, it's integrating with the platforms that musicians are actively using to make it easier to bring that experience and use those tools in combination with your website for all the reasons we spoke about at the very sure. you know, top of the uh, 
webinar. And so you mentioned a few more platforms. So technically, the you're already able to embed live streams in your website, but you're adding Twitch and Crowdcast. Um, well, right now, but you're announcing that tomorrow. Yeah, and it's okay. um, it's a it's a direct inter technical integration. So there's no embed code involved anymore with any of those platforms. It's simply you grab the link and you paste the link, and it I don't know through some Populate. development magic it <laughs> it reads where the where the link is, which site the link is coming from, and then creates the embed for you. So it's just a more seamless way because you, you, you know when you're embedding code, you can run into issues <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice boom did i spell embeds wrong i misspelled it there we go <laughs> no code live stream embeds come on people that is what's going on okay so i currently i have a couple of clients that have banned google websites but i don't actually have one myself i'm like i psh, what, what am i doing <laughs> Shop what are you doing? Shop we talk later. Whatever. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> what? So, okay, so this is all, you know, obviously been great, um, but let's show some examples or at least mm -hmm. talk about how um, artists would set up their uh, subscription and just like some of the best practices for setting up your your fan subscription. And, you know, obviously, you know, one of the things that is, you know, unique to this is that it is, you know, it's a paywall. So people mm -hmm. are going to be able to come to your website and do all of the things that they do on your website but then you'll have a page that is going to be you know unique to your subscription and obviously having done this for a while now and seeing you know having seen several artists and things do this so you know you have some definite best practices that you know you want to that we want to actually take part in so you know one of them is obviously with a, a, a good description yeah, so you'll see, like, this is the gated paywall page, that screenshot. So when a fan lands on a page that's part of your subscriptions offering, your fan club, they're going to see this um, this page automatically. And it lets them know that they need a subscription to access that page, the different levels, the different tiers, like we were mentioning, and different prices and with the description of the rewards. And then the main part of the page is uh, a video, which we'll get into, and like a text description. Just So some fans might be like, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's your way to you know to describe what what the fan club is, what it's all about, why you're doing it, what they can expect to get from it, kind of thing. And it, and it's important, you know, to use language that's positive and talking about exclusivity and access and joining you along your journey and things like that. It's it's not, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't have to be yeah, it doesn't have to be too wordy, but just you know, initial intro and and thank your fans and and explain how it, you know, it, it helps your career, you know, uh, mm -hmm. by having their support, that kind of thing. So just on that page, uh, you know, when a fan lands on one of these, because on bands, you can, you can, you can gate any page of your website to be mm -hmm. subscription only, um, or you can do more of a traditional like feed based thing. But, um, you know, just when fans land on it, it's just is kind of their introduction to who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing this fan club, what they can expect, um, to get from it awesome so yeah start off with a great description as he you know mentioned thinking about it in a you know inclusive kind of you know wording and things like that and you know just you know the whole making it sound desperate thing um you know we might be desperate i mean i think we're in some desperate times mm -hmm. uh right now with a lot of musicians but you know is that something that you know, people are going to respond to. Some people might, but more often than not, people are going to want to be a part of something positive, something yeah. that has momentum and that, you know, that they're going to be able to, you know, say that I was part of this really cool story. Um, so making them feel a part of something special. And then as Dave mentioned, using words like join and exclusive and get access. Um, and one of the things too that I, as you were, as I was looking through these and looking at these examples, some of the words that I started to actually hone in on um, are words like community. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we're getting to, you know, a couple of these other examples, but, you know, fan club, 
you know, it's a very inclusive kind of, you know, terminology and things like that. So thinking about those and we'll take a look at a couple other examples too and just the words that they use. But, um, you know, Kenya here, for example, um, used her as a good example of being able to create a great engaging video that would be on that page too. Yeah, it's it's a bit similar to like the, you know, here I am comparing crowdfunding again, but again, different <laughs> revenue model, but some of the same tools used. So with crowdfunding, you, you do tend to have a pitch video. And this is kind of that, but it's more of like a welcome video, like, you know, right. welcoming your fans into your fan club and what they what they can expect and that kind of thing. Um, so having that video uh, definitely helps. Uh, you, you don't have to have the video there. You can just have the text right. description, but again it's a little bit more engaging it's a little bit more personal it's more interactive it's you know mm-hmm. uh, not interactive but it's you know more visual um right. more engaging so we definitely recommend creating uh, a video and it doesn't have to be super professionally produced it could be very just you know off the cuff and off just... the cuff just make sure that you've got some natural lighting you know it's <laughs> steady mm-hmm. steady iphone or, or you know smartphone and um and just talk about it's very similar to the in- to the text description, but a little bit more personal. And, you know, yeah. you're kind of speaking from the heart of who you are and what you're doing and, and why you're doing this fan club. Yeah, getting, you know, allowing people to land on the page to, to get a chance to, to know you. And, you know, talked a lot about just video content and live stream content in terms of being able to have fans get to, you know, move down their customer relationship with you of you know the no like and trust factor so if they can see you and hear you at the same time and it's like oh you know what i haven't met this person but i feel like i know them Mm -hmm. you know and you know i like their personality or oh that was funny or that was kind of awkward i'm kind of awkward too hey let me get in there (laughs) absolutely (laughs) but yeah um yeah as you mentioned it can be just rough one to two minutes you know be yourself um, what you are and what you do and then just thanking them for being there so whether or not they've actually joined or signed up at that point you know they've landed on that page so people are probably not going to be searching for you know your artist name and your genre and cold traffic who's never heard anything about you and end up on this page so just being able to thank them for just getting that far is you know basically modeling you know what the type of behavior that you'll probably be yeah. they'll probably see once they get into your community it's like oh that was nice yeah absolutely and then yeah so talking about some of these other points dave you know describing some of the benefits and rewards that they'll get you know have you seen some really i would assume you've seen some really creative uh you know, videos or introduction videos, you know, is it, is shorter actually better than, you know, have you seen some longer ones or are you able to track like conversion yeah, rates? We don't have data on conversion rates uh, like that, but yeah, like in that two to four minute range is probably, you know, you, you want to save like a lot of exclusive content for behind the paywall. So, <laughs> right. um, don't you know, give it again, all away. Don't give it all away. It doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to be a slick production and you don't have to name the individual rewards for each tier because if you change something, they got to redo the video and you got, you know, so mm. just be in general, That's speak in general point. terms about, you know, what fans can expect, the type of access and exclusive, you know, exclusive content they can, uh, they can get awesome so description um a great um introductory video and let me take uh this off here so we can see here but yeah this is kenya music and she again this is the video that we saw just a couple of slides ago but yeah she's got a fan club is what she's called you know her subscribers which is awesome Mm -hmm. and you know, she's, you know, got a really simple yep. one tier offer. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where we see a lot of this on the platform where it's one tier, it's five, two, five or 10 bucks a month. Um, you can stream the entire catalog, you get access to tracks early, and you get some discounts on merch. And yeah. you know what, five bucks a month, it's for your super fans, that's probably a great offer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely 
you know, you have the ability to build a bunch of other stuff, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, are people tipping you five bucks every live stream? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, this is a good, a good entry point for, like you said, those super fans. So that's Kenya, and you know she's got a, an introductory video there. That's you know this is on the page that's public uh, mm -hmm. to the website, and then we have Leslie Pike, and you know instead of fan club, she's using the word members. So it's a very mm -hmm. again inclusive group. I'm a member of this community, and Leslie also has a a one tier a one tier offer. Exactly. Yeah. So a little bit more expensive. So ten dollars a month. And yeah, I, I love that distinction. Like members, fans, and and you know, there's different ways of saying it, but it's all yeah. it's all the same concept. And so what she's done is, you know, the simple one tier for ten dollars a month, but you get those exclusive live streams every month and mm -hmm. exclusive unreleased songs. So it's yeah. slightly different approach, and yeah. she's charging a premium for that. Um, and you know it's working for her so yeah. um that's another example of just you know keeping it simple manage mm -hmm. you know manageable and effective nice yeah i love you know i love just the the simplicity of being able just to create a a tier mm -hmm. um and then yeah we talked earlier about music teachers or musicians that provide lessons yep. um you know nick johnston is doing just that um i love the whole extra credit uh <laughs> concept there but you know he's got a two-tier offer yeah and you know it seems to be working out pretty well for him he's got you know it looked like they had you know some momentum there just from seeing some of the um the input there but so yeah, yeah, he's got a six dollar and a ten dollar tier. Yeah, and I think the distinction with him is um, the six dollar tier. You get like extra assignments and homework and and sort of extra content. So again, teaching lends itself to creating content. And then the ten dollar a month, you get one on one access to Nick. And so that's the exclusive, nice. you know, yeah. reward and for the premium price. So it's initially a simple. Um, teaching um subscription model but um, i kind of i think it's a good example to show like how you can break down the tiers and offer something a little bit more for the the more expensive tier nice yeah and then this uh next example i'm mm -hmm. gonna say hudost yeah yeah um I think, yeah, who knows, who dost, who dost, probably. Um, yeah. I should know this. I've known them for a very long time, and I always <laughs> mix it up. But, um, yeah, they have a little bit more of a complex um, subscriptions offering uh, where mm -hmm. they have four tiers, and it ranges from five bucks all the way to a hundred bucks. And so, you know, it ranges yeah. from early access to new music, exclusive songs, the exclusive line online shows. And I love that you know, wait, there's more. <laughs> um, you know, they create artwork. Um, they do these cool. vegan cooking live sessions because <laughs> they're vegans and they love to cook. They love do that. live streamed in studio sessions. They offer the discounts. They and you know, custom birthday messages for like the the higher tier. So that gives you an idea of like if you really want to dive into multiple tiers and multiple different types of rewards like this is this is a great example of you know the yeah. different kind of fun like vegan cooking sessions wasn't on my list of 71 things you could do right, to reward right. your fans but it's a creative <laughs> thing that's unique to them and obviously their brand and who they are as as people right. and they probably figure their fans are into some a lot of the same things they are and so they offer these vegan cooking sessions and also moksha the, the singer um is a great artist visual artist and so she does offers her artwork as part mm -hmm. of the subscription so it's like looking That's it doesn't cool. have, have to be music and i think you touched on this before like it can be other things that you know all musicians are very creative people and they probably do other things and so you can incorporate that this is for your super fans it doesn't have to be super polished it doesn't have to be you know what i mean like it could be right. something that's exclusive for them that you know maybe you don't want to share it with the whole world but for your super fans yeah like mm -hmm. this is kind of you know 
I really love cooking and here's here are my vegan recipes or I, I'm also a visual artist and I don't I'm not sure if Moksha sells it separately but she's offering as sure. part of you know the subscriptions for the fan club so you know again it's a little bit more complex they're a little bit more established they've been around for a long time they have a more established fan base and so gotcha. they, they launched with something that's a little bit more elaborate that's cool yeah that, and that's and I love those examples of the simple one tier but then you've got a maybe a couple of tiers and maybe even a teaching platform but then yeah just kind of branching out and seeing what other passions you have and mm -hmm. you know if you think about you know just music and connecting with fans and your super fans it's like music marketing is is you know we're all trying to find those things that we have in common yeah. and you know obviously music is you know one of the things that a lot of us have in common but there could be some other stuff that you don't think that people would want to consume that you know one th <laughs> here's go so two places to look if you're looking for ideas and you're just like crazy like oh i don't know what i'm going to do first of all we're going to give you that link to the handout for the 101 ideas to start your fan subscription mm -hmm. but a couple other places to think about uh, dave just mentioned twitch um i I'm not going to bet any money because I don't have that much, but I would say that whatever you are thinking about doing or that you have an interest in, like this thing that you're obsessing over, man, there's probably a Twitch channel, not just a person, but there's probably a Twitch channel yeah. out there right now of multiple people streaming, doing that same thing. I've seen some really interesting and diverse things out there but uh but more seriously too on this whole thing about the artwork and the, the vegan cooking sessions and things like that you know if you're also thinking you know no one would ever pay to have me do this or whatever you know take a take a gander out at fiverr f-i-v-e-r-r.com and just see the different types of things that uh, people are offering as gigs uh, because you would be amazed at how stuff that you take for granted because you're so good at it, because you've done it for so long that you think there's no way nobody would pay for that. There's probably people out there that are paying several types of bills um, <laughs> <laughs> doing the exact same thing uh, that you're doing, but you could build that. I'm not saying, hey, go join Fiverr. I mean, you can, but those are things to consider, you know, ideas for your subscription. Um, those are things that maybe people would want to either watch you do or ha even have you do it for them. Um, and I love that whole custom birthday message. Uh, yeah, thing. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what made me think of Fiverr, actually, is because there are probably hundreds of people out there now that have different types of birthday gigs that they sell. Um, you know, mm -hmm. here's a, a hard rock thing, and, you know, here's what the music bed sounds like, and you just tell me whose birthday it is, and I'll, you know, sing their name in it come on guys we all know the birthday song right <laughs> hopefully that's not that's in public domain so I'm, i think you can probably use that one no, it is. Uh, <laughs> so cool those are um some really good um examples you guys and dave i know we've run it a little long here but thank you thank you thank you for hanging out and just providing uh your input in these you know really exclusive announcements um, <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's great. It's great timing. Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, guys, you know, just as we're continuing um, in our artist collective membership, you know, I will put a link um, inside the membership. Um, and actually, if you're watching this live, it's probably in the post uh, that you are watching this in as well, but it won't be up there for long. But this is, you know, courtesy of the artist collective. You know, we do have. Um, if you do want to get started with a Banzooka website, you know, we do have a free uh, trial for 30 days um, that, you know, again, we'll provide that link in the membership area. But you also get, um, if this is your first time, you know, you didn't like leave and come back like I did. But <laughs> for first time uh, users, uh, there is a 15% discount on your subscription. So the the amount of things that you get for you know just the different plans is is crazy but uh, just being able to have just that one set price of what your website you know will will charge you for just that small amount for a subscription for a month and then being able to do all of these things that we just said 
free of commission, mm-hmm. it's definitely worth looking into. And I love the fact that you guys uh, that you guys do that, Dave. Is that you know you're not you're not trying to to piecemeal and trying to you know just add on nickel and dime and things like that. So that's that's great. So no, as a musician, it, we thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. Well, we appreciate it, and we appreciate the support from musicians. But you know, I, getting back to what you said, I don't think Van Ziegel's raised prices since like 2010 or 2009 or something like that there was a there was an economic downturn in the united states and that was the only time i think bands will change prices which was adding a cheaper plan <laughs> <laughs> like you know what i mean like it's mm. you know yeah it, it, there may have been a price raise like early, like early days, Banzoogle, maybe in the first few years, but it's been the same for, for as long as I can remember. Uh, that's, that's well over, you know, 13, 14 years. And we just keep adding more and more um, features and functionality to it. And uh, yeah, so it's the 15%. It's off the first year. So if you uh, oh, subscribe gotcha. to yeah. an annual plan, you already get two months free. And then you add the 15% that's kind of on top of that. I mean, your first year of, of a website is uh, super affordable. You get the domain included hosting, all that fun stuff. So that's great. That's great. And yeah, I will put a link to this next little gem, um, link to PDF in there. So you can't click on the screen, but I will put a link uh, to this, this download. And this is for everybody, regardless of whether or not you are an artist collective member, because we want you to take a look and consider this as an option for you to be able to develop um, additional revenue streams or maybe it's develop a revenue stream maybe you're you you've lost your gigs and you know the venues are closing down and opening up and you're just looking for a way to help monetize your content um you know thinking about this and again depending on your fan base and your you know willingness to engage and the amount of content you create all those things that we talked about you know fan subscriptions um, could be something that could help you kind of bridge that gap and and start to pay a bill or two so we want to not only give you the resources to you know start your website but also the ideas because i think that's a lot of time where we get stuck Mm -hmm. is because you know we don't know what to do next or we are trying to think of ideas and all we can do is look and see what other folks are doing and you know that's so let me do what they're doing and as again you know dave mentioned about the amanda amanda palmer example we might not have the resources to do what she's what she's doing now so um but yeah there'll be 30 live stream prompts and these prompts are non you know non uh, virtual gig non music so we, we're going to assume that in some way shape or form you know how to do your live stream concert or play <laughs> for them so we wanted to give you some other ideas of you know topics and things that you could use for your fan subscription things that you could provide that exclusive content for and then um yeah dave dave wrote an awesome article last year called the 71 ways to reward your fans um i boiled it down to one page of that in a pdf uh, but also link to the article if you want to read uh, that as well but that is our gift to you thank you for hanging out if you were here live we appreciate you if you're watching this on replay we also appreciate you and we obviously appreciate dave thank you again for taking the time to come and chat with us today man oh i had a great time it was great chatting with you leonard hope everyone watching you know hopefully that was uh helpful in some way and uh, appreciate you tuning in and if you're here live thanks for sticking in there um we went yeah you know we went a bit long but it's you know this stuff is super interesting and it's new for a lot of musicians so it was you know, yeah. i i am I, I was thrilled that you invited me to come on and, and chat about subscriptions so appreciate it definitely cool well dave hang on just a second i'll take you into the to the waiting room there and uh <laughs> But yes, you guys, thank you so much for um, just watching. And, you know, if you are an Artist Collective member, um, you know, part of this or maybe the whole thing, we'll see how how it shakes out. But part of this will actually be um, in the membership area and a part of um, the course that we're talking about, live stream strategies that will ignite your fans. And then uh, stay tuned here. We've got several other um, interviews and we've got some additional content that you can actually start to take advantage of in your course. If you haven't actually started your live stream strategies course, please do so uh, because we want to help you build in this recurring income and just incorporate this type of content that's going to help you connect with your fans all right 
that's all I've got, you guys. You have an awesome day. I appreciate you hanging out. And if you're watching this afterwards and you have questions, please drop them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them. And other than that, you guys have an awesome day and keep making music. All right. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.